What is happening guys? Brody here with another new video. Today, what I plan on doing is fixing the airbag situation on my seats. If you watched my last video, I went ahead and installed the new bride bucket seats that I had purchased. I pretty much wrapped up that portion of the interior swap. Um, however, when I installed the seats, uh, I mentioned that the airbag light was still on and I basically explained what I needed to do in order to get that light off my dash. Um, there was a few things that were involved, one of which was putting some resistors into the airbag connectors under the seats. And the other issue lied within the passenger seat where I actually had to remove the passenger occupancy sensor out of the seat and basically reinstall it somehow into my new bucket seat. And those two things are what is causing the airbag light on my dash to be on. So at the moment, I'm currently driving with zero airbags and I do not wanna be doing that. So today what I'm gonna try and do is fix that problem. And like I said, I explained all of this stuff in my last video. That's the one where I install the bride bucket seats. If you haven't watched that, definitely go check that out first if you have any questions regarding what I'm doing. Anyways guys, let's go ahead and start doing what we need to do today. Um, obviously I have installed the bucket seats already, so I'm hoping I can just access any connectors I need with the seats installed. I don't really want to unbolt them. Have to tilt them back and rebolt them again, so hopefully I can access everything I need to. Nothing really goes right when you're working on cars, right? So, um, but anyways, like I said, I'll show you here. I am absolutely loving them. Not only do they look sick, but they feel amazing. Stopped at my parents' place and grabbed some drill bits as well. This foam, um, they had some foam lying around, so I grabbed it. I'll explain that further once we get to that part. What we are going to start working on is the bottom of the passenger seat. So hopefully you can see all this okay. I've essentially just flipped the passenger seat onto its back. The first thing you'll notice, the difference between the passenger seat and the driver seat is the driver seat does not have this little piece of foam underneath as well. There's obviously more cables running underneath the passenger seat. So these are all the connectors that I need um, in the car right now under the, the bride seat. On the other end, there's connectors coming out of the car um, and those have nothing to plug into. So because there's nothing plugged into them at the moment, that is why obviously the airbags aren't working. As well, this sensor will basically determine whether or not someone is sitting in the seat. A few things you're gonna likely need for this are, I just grabbed a blade, knife, um, maybe a couple flathead screwdrivers. I also just grabbed a little pair of pliers. And lastly, a drill with an 11 64th drill bit. Um, you need that specific size. First thing you might notice, there's a couple black clamps just holding um, these cables in place. So we're just gonna go ahead and take these clamps off. Also, I'm just gonna go ahead and disconnect that cable um, from this one here. I'm gonna just show you guys a little up close just so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. I was just connected into this black piece here and this piece goes in here and then that goes right into where the bag and sensor is. So I just went ahead and disconnected that and I'll pop this off this metal clip as well right away. And this is the piece that we're going to have to remove the rivets. There's one in the top left corner and there's another rivet down here in the bottom right. As well, you'll see these two little green clips right there. And there's one hiding right behind this yellow um, cable, if you can see it right there. And there's one more black clamp holding this cable in place. I'll take that off too. In order to pop this off, this little metal tab, just put a flat head in there underneath and just pry it up, it'll just slide off. Let's take this other little black clamp off. And just an FYI guys, like obviously you might know this, but just be really careful when we're taking this sensor out because apparently it is pretty expensive. So all these cables have been disconnected. Now next step is this little piece here which should just pop off. Like so. Like that. There's a couple little black clips holding the fabric around the side of the seat as well. I've just noticed. So once you get that, those off, you should be able to pull this right up. So when you actually pull this up, then if you look down in here, that's actually the foam and sensor right there. Because you're not gonna get the sensor out past this like box spring. So that's where we'll have to end up pulling the sensor out from. 
We'll first have to remove those two green clips that I pointed out. So I'm gonna try and get them with this blade here first. Okay, so I managed to get those two little green clips out. Honestly, uh, cutting them was a little complicated. So I actually just grabbed them with some pliers, squeezed them, and kind of pushed them back up. And then with my hand, I reached around on the other side and just grabbed the end of them and just kind of reefed them out. The sensor's now loose. Feed this thing through the box spring. This thing obviously wants to get caught on everything. There you go. It's just like that. Sensor is out. Perfect. That was actually really easy. I guess on this um, system, it's not so much, I don't know, it's not so much a sensor. I guess it's more like a bladder system where it obviously sends some kind of signal from this piece squishing. Now the next step is going to be taking off this um, sensor module kind of piece and that's the piece that's held on by two rivets. So I might just go lie down a bag just so I don't get any metal shavings on my carpet. We're gonna drill this rivet out first and then we'll go down and do the bottom right rivet. And yeah, just kind of line it up with the hole in the rivet, drill away and hopefully it should just kind of pop out. There we go. See that? You basically, while you're drilling it, start getting a bit of a hole, and then you might have to kind of just rotate the drill around. And there we go. Other one is off. Sweet. And now, ta-da! Sensor off. That really wasn't too bad. I was actually dreading doing this because I thought it was gonna be an absolute pain to get this stuff out of the seat, but that wasn't bad at all. All right, sweet. Because this bladder originally went underneath this seat, so when someone sat in the seat, it would obviously come down and the bladder would squish against these springs. Now, because the bucket seat that I have in the car is obviously a hard shell, that will never work. So you can't obviously put this underneath the seat. What I've actually heard of people doing is they'll wrap the bladder up so it constantly applies pressure against itself but the problem with that is, then your car will always think someone's sitting in the seat. So even if you're not driving a passenger around, it's always gonna think there's someone sitting down. So if you got into an accident, which obviously you hope you don't, um, what would happen is all of your airbags will still go off. And that's kind of the whole point of this system in the first place, is to prevent that, because obviously if there's no one in that seat, you don't need those airbags going off. But what I think I'm actually going to do is instead of putting it underneath the seat, what I will do is I will put this piece in between, um, so on top of the, I guess, outer shell of the seat and between the foam that the person actually sits on. There is a little hole in the shell of the bucket that this piece could actually drop down. So that would actually work really well. So I think that's what I'm gonna go with. Uh, but first, get this stuff plugged up together, um, connect the rest of these cables to the connectors that are coming out of the car. And also what I'm gonna do is grab those resistors and then I can go ahead and plug the resistors in those cables as well. Um, also when you're doing this, just to be safe, definitely go disconnect the battery. What is up guys? All right, so I did end up taking a little bit of a break there from filming. My battery actually just died. Um, so in the meantime, I actually went ahead, uh, got everything connected and kind of just positioned and I just wanted to test it and make sure everything worked. And it did. So I'm really happy to have finally gotten that part figured out. Uh, I'll show you guys exactly what I did and I'll walk you through it. Um, really simple. Also, just an FYI, um, the way I have the bladder kind of set up uh, in the bucket seat, I kind of Mickey Mouse it a little bit. I'm definitely not gonna leave it like that. Uh, at this point in time, I just wanted to make sure that the system was working and it does. Um, but going forward, I am gonna think of some other way to set that up. Uh, obviously when I'm doing work on my car, I want to do the cleanest job possible. I'm going to try and brainstorm here over the next day or two and uh, think of a little bit better of a setup. Also though, if you can think of a better way to do this, by all means, let me know in the comments below. All right guys, so 
Popping into the back, we will start on the driver's side, seeing that was the easiest part. So as you can see, or hopefully kind of see, um, all I did was, um, I don't know if you can see the resistor there, I just grabbed my airbag connector. It only had two holes in it, so it's pretty common sense uh, where to put the ends of the resistor. Uh, I just bent it into like a U shape and then fed it into each of the holes. Uh, and that's really all I did. So connected that up and that was all I needed to do on the driver side. I am going to grab some electrical tape and wrap this up just so obviously the resistor stays in its place. So as for the passenger side, again, the exact same thing. I just went ahead and grabbed the airbag connector and I fed the 3.3 ohm resistor into the end. Everything has its own connection point. So I just went ahead and plugged everything in. Obviously the seat belt comes down from the side and plugs into here. Um, bladder comes down underneath the seat and it plugs into this connection here. And then this guy also plugs into here. And then obviously this is where the airbag and resistor is. So everything has a connection point. Like I said, at this point in time, I'm kind of just making sure everything works. And I just wanted to kind of show you guys how to go about that. Um, but I will end up um, thinking of a better way to mount all the stuff. Same as the driver's side. I don't want to just leave all the cables dangling around under the seat. I'll probably end up zip tying them or doing something to keep them up and out of the way underneath the seat. Let me take you now around to the front of the passenger seat and I will show you how I have the bladder set up. Like I said, this is where the connector comes down from the bladder. Uh, and I'll show you that now. So obviously this foam comes up and as you can see, this foam has some Velcro on it which obviously originally stuck to the bottom or the base of the seat. Um, now with this foam and bladder in its place, it obviously doesn't have anything to stick to. So that's kind of one of the things that I want to think of something better. That extra foam that I had, I cut out an extra couple squares, one on the top, one on the bottom, and that was just kind of added protection to go around the bladder, you can see the cord here. I also cut a hole in the foam on the bottom. And then if I lift that up, you can see there is a hole at the base of the bucket seat and that is where the cord is going down through. And as you saw before, that's how it connects to that module. So as you can see, it's just kind of sitting on the top now. It's not actually Velcroed down into place. I mean, at least you can't see anything, but I do want to think of a better way to set that up. Just to show you that everything works, I'm gonna go ahead and just turn the ignition to on. And then, as you can see, well, let's see if I can zoom in a bit. See that airbag light just went off. We just walked around to the passenger side seat. So I'm just kind of hovering over top of the seat at the moment. There's passenger airbag on the top, and then on the bottom it says off. So now if I just sit down into the seat, There, boom, passenger airbag on. So there you go guys, super stoked on that. I'm super happy that I finally got this fixed. I thought that was gonna be a way more complicated job, but honestly, it really wasn't that bad whatsoever. Hopefully this helps anyone out there, whether you bought some bucket seats and you're trying to figure this out, or if you're planning on buying bucket seats and you wanted to make sure the rest of the airbags in your car still work, definitely really straightforward and a really easy fix. So uh, if that's what's keeping you from going to bucket seats, it's definitely uh, definitely doable. So hopefully that helps you guys. Um, but yeah, other than that, that is basically everything I wanted to cover today. If you guys liked it, definitely smash that thumbs up button. Um, it's always appreciated. If you haven't already, definitely hit that subscribe button as well. That way you guys can stay up to date on future videos I post. There is definitely a lot of plans coming from my car. I have obviously started the interior swap in it. If you have not seen the last few videos I posted, um, as well, I still have more interior work to do. I still have to do the trim, the pillars, the headliner. So I still got a bunch left there as well. I do have some cosmetic mods coming for the exterior of the car. Um, also, I plan on doing like a complete overview of everything I've done to my car. So if you're interested at all in any of those videos, definitely hit that subscribe button. As well, I'll also have my Instagram in the description below. So if you haven't, definitely go follow me there as well. But uh, yeah, guys, that is it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day and we'll catch you in the next one. Take it easy guys.